Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be how your emotions fuel the narcissistic relationship. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So your emotions, they, these are a very pivotal part of any narcissistic relationship. The narcissist wants to control your emotions. They want to be able to turn a switch on and off. They want you to be happy when they want you to be happy. They want to punish you when they don't want you to be happy. And everywhere in between this relationship you were a part of, there was sprinkled in different narcissistic abusive tactics, which include gaslighting, the smear campaign, the silent treatment, stonewalling, rage fits. There are so many things the narcissist has in their arsenal, their tool belt of weapons of destruction, if you will. But your emotions were the one catalyst that really fueled that relationship. Now, the narcissistic relationship we now know, it's built on quicksand. It's built on a house of cards. There's no substance. There's no core to the narcissist. What they wanted to do is they wanted to capture your beautiful, bright, shining light and steal your positive energy and control your emotions for this video as much as they possibly could. So when you first met the narcissist, most likely, again, you were a empath, a people pleaser, a yes person. Maybe you didn't have boundaries. Maybe you could not say no, the strongest word in the English language. And remember, when you say no to something or someone, you are saying yes to yourself. And the narcissist knew all these things about you because that relationship you were part of, it probably moved at light speed. It probably moved rather quickly. And before you knew it, your friendship with the narcissist advanced and perhaps you were dating. Next thing you know, there's a movement in date and you guys are gonna move into an apartment and wedding bells are around the corner. That is a narcissistic romantic relationship in a nutshell, and I'm not trying to diminish it. It's just that these things move so quickly because when the narcissist has their eyes on a person, which was you, they want to move as quickly as possible because they wanna take as much of your resources and your emotions and energy, time, money, effort, love, empathy away from you as quickly as possible. In other words, they wanna lock you down. So that is why the narcissistic relationship usually moves so quickly, but your emotions were what fueled the relationship and why I say that is because think about all of the beautiful possible memories you could have created with the narcissist. And almost all of them, or virtually most of them, were destroyed by one person who was the narcissist. Take any holiday you want. Did the narcissist blow up the holiday? Probably. They probably made a fit or threw a rage fit or they were late for the event or couldn't make it if it was something important to you. That's just one thing the narcissist does. Another thing is, let's say your birthday. Did they celebrate your birthday? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they claim they couldn't quite make it that time because they had to boil an egg or they had to do something else. Now, I'm not trying to be comical. I'm letting you know the narcissist never cared about anybody. They didn't care about you. They don't care about the new supply. They care about themselves. But it's your emotions that the narcissist looks to control throughout the whole relationship. Think about when you, were, you would be texting the narcissist and in the beginning of the relationship, maybe you had all the cute little emojis and you would get all the fake adoration, the fake love, the fake empathy, the fake caring about you. And this was meant to get you in, in, ensconched or deeper in the narcissistic fog. They wanted you to not figure out who they were and that what they wanted was you to send back more and more emojis. And the more emojis you sent back, the further you got trapped. And then lo and behold, what happened is the narcissist eventually slowed down on sending you the emojis and all the unicorns and puppies and the rainbows and everything that made you feel good. Because when they withdrew that, then they were turning on the devaluation of you. And each and every day you were thinking, hey, I can get back to that love bomb stage. I can get back to that euphoric stage. Maybe if I send 15 hearts or emojis, this person will actually answer me. Well, they, they weren't doing that. In other words, they knew they had you because most likely you professed that you loved them or you moved in with them or you had kids with them or you loaned them money or put a roof over their head or signed a contract or the deed to your house to them. Whatever you did, that was one of the end games for the narcissist. And when they did their heavy lifting in the beginning of the relationship, which is when they really work for the relationship to get you trapped in that zombie-like trance-like state, which is the narcissistic fog, when they got you placed there, that's when they really wanted to control your emotions. Understand the beginning of the relationship, probably everything was moving at light speed and it was going almost too good to be true because it was too good to be true. The narcissistic relationship is like a spaceship headed up into orbit, but it doesn't quite break the stratosphere or the atmosphere and it explodes. Why? Because that's the, the destination 
of the narcissistic relationship, it's gonna expire, it's gonna explode, it's gonna implode, and the narcissist knows this. That's why they wanna go as quickly as possible in the beginning of these relationships to lock you down. Now, when they did know that they had you locked down, the emotions, all of the fakeness of that they were displaying to you, all of the batting of the eyelashes or winking at you or fake cuddling and all the, the future faking and the words they would share with you, they didn't have to do that any longer. They, because they now had you placed in the devaluation stage. And this is where they wanted to really, really control your emotions. They wanted you pining for them. They wanted you wondering where they were. They wanted you wondering when they would come home. They wanted you wondering if you were, if they were gonna reply to your text. They wanted you wondering if they called you today, what they would tell you. The narcissist wanted you always waiting for them and they wanted you to be in, they wanted to control your emotions. So think about this, you were at work back then when you were in the narcissistic fog, you would go to work and let's say the morning went okay. Maybe it did, who knows? But then you're at work and all of a sudden your phone's blown up and who is it? It's the narcissist and they're, they're texting you. And there's a fire that needs to be put out. That we have the wrong peanut butter in the house or the bread is expired. And you're like, well, I'm at work and I'm trying to make a living to pay for these things. Do I really need to go home and take care of these things right now? Well, they would say, fine, have it your way. And then what would they do? Maybe they would go out buy the peanut butter or get the bread while you were working and then you would come home and it was there. But because you didn't do it, you would get the silent treatment. Now, what did that do for you? I'll tell you exactly what it did for you. It set you back. It's more abuse. It's more invalidating you. It's more having you be devalued. The narcissist knows how to administer the punishment with all of their tools that they utilize. And they knew that the silent treatment would be one way to get you to the ne next time to buy the right peanut butter or to make sure the bread was stocked because the narcissist is lazy. They're a coward and a bully. They want people working for them. They want to have people that they control their emotions. They never want people to be happy. They don't want people living their best life. They want people trapped in the narcissistic low vibrational quagmire state where the narcissist exists. And you fell for it, I fell for it too. That's why when you understand that who you are, maybe you still are an empath, maybe you're, you've healed and you're reaching that pinnacle of indifference, that mountaintop of indifference where you no longer care about the narcissist or anybody from that period of time. If that's you, drop comments below. But you now know that you are in control of your emotions and that nobody should ever, ever be in control of your emotions again. In other words, just because somebody has a fire to put out or an emergency or something that they need or claim that they need help from, example, let's say the narcissist needed a credit card bill to be paid. They didn't have money. Why? Because they're too busy shopping on Amazon and they wanted you to foot the bill. These are examples left, right, and center. But that kind of thing, that's not your problem. It wasn't your problem back then, but you made it your problem because you were trying to keep peace in the narcissistic relationship. But now, because you are acquiring the wisdom and you're implementing the tools that are provided for you in the community and on the channel, you don't, that someone else's credit card debt or bill, that's their problem. Maybe it's your sister, maybe it's your brother who says, hey, you have a lot of money, just help me out a little bit here. And they're slowly bleeding you of money. They ask to borrow $1,000 here, 1,500 there, 3,000 there, whatever the amount is, the, the amount will be directly contingent upon how much money you have in the bank. In other words, you could add or subtract a couple zeros there, but they want your money because why? Because the narcissist believes that you will bail them out because they believe in the past you've been there to bail them out, that you would do it again. They also believe that you can't figure them out or you haven't figured them out. They also believe that you will be guilted or victimized into giving them money that, of which they will never repay. Think about this one. If you were financially abused by the narcissist, think about how much money you gave or lost or contributed to the betterment of them to the detriment of yourself. That would be a very t difficult pill to swallow. I've had to do it a couple times and replay how much money I invested in the narcissistic relationship. But again, post-narcissistic relationship, once you've healed, you understand there are many consequences, many prices to pay to exit the narcissistic relationship. And again, as I mentioned, which I haven't shared before, the amount of money that you had to give up when you were in the relationship, it's directly correlated to how much money you had in the bank or your earning capacity. So if you were earning a lot of money, then I'm sure you were taken to the cleaners with a lot of money. If you didn't have much money, well, it was the, the same thing. It was a direct correlation to how many, how many assets or how much money you had. Now, having said all these things, the emotions are what the narcissist wanted to control in the narcissistic relationship because they would love to have you, let's say, eating dinner with them at a fancy restaurant while they were on one of their three smartphones triangulating you and they were watching your blood boil. They were watching you sweat. They were watching you not enjoy your dinner. They were watching 
you watch them talk to the wait staff or the, the chef as if they knew them, as if they were besties, totally invalidating you. That is triangulation at its finest, and that's what the narcissist does. But they wanted to control your emotions. So at that, using that example, which I've used frequently, if that happened, what do you do? Well, you're at the dinner, you're paying for the dinner, you probably were the chauffeur who drove them there, you're probably walking them outside so they can have cigarette breaks or whatever they're doing outside, texting, and you're, you're doing everything for the narcissist. Now, having said that, you have two options. One, you can say something at the dinner table like, hey, you're, you know, you're batting your eyelashes at that wait staff. What's going on? I don't get this. Like, I'm here with you. We've been married X number of years. What is it? Well, if you say that, then you're now falling into the trap. Now they're going to spin it around on you and say you're so insecure. I knew I shouldn't have gone out to this restaurant with you. I knew I shouldn't have married you. What's your problem? Can't I talk to anybody? I'm free to do whatever I want to. Get thicker skin. They'll say things like that. And then the other option is what? You say nothing. And then when you say nothing, this builds up over the length of the relationship because the less you share, because the narcissist doesn't want you to share anything with them because they don't care about you, they don't want to hear about your concerns or they don't want you to recognize their poor behavior, certainly they don't want you to bring it up. But this adds up over time, it builds up and eventually something has to give. That's why the weight of the relationship, all of that relationship weight was on your shoulders, it wasn't on the narcissist. They never cared about you. They didn't love you then, they don't love you now, and they don't love the new supply. They were looking at you and watching your resources become dim diminished and depleted each and every day, week after week, month after month, maybe even decade after decade. And they put you in a conundrum. They put you in a catch-22. You're damned if you say something, you're damned if you don't. And when you don't have the wisdom on the narcissistic abusive cycle, you are really in a challenging place to say the least because you can't wrap your head around what kind of relationship you're in. The relationship is continuing to get worse. The narcissist is around you less and less. And when you do see the narcissist, they're acting like you're an unpaid helper or a servant, or you should be fortunate that you have the ability to pay for their lifestyle and you're getting none of the benefits. You're, you're not getting any fake love, fake empathy, fake anything. You're getting less and less and less because that reason is because most likely the new supply has been lined up and the narcissist is just waiting for a holiday, a birthday, a death in the family, a birth in the family, some, some kind of um, very pivotal period of time in that, during that year to, to discard you and crumble you up like a sheet of paper and throw you away. But why your emotions were a pivotal part of the narcissistic relationship, the narcissist needed to control your emotions. Think about this, when you were in the relationship, if you had a couple days of pleasantness, of let's say somewhat normalcy or stability, and you were just starting to feel good about yourself. In other words, let's say you had two or three, maybe even four days if you're fortunate without drama and the narcissist is be behaving the way they should. In other words, they're not blaming you or throwing rage fits or gaslighting you or giving you the silent treatment, etc. And you're like, wow, this isn't so bad. This relationship could be good. And as soon as that happened, boom, the narcissist would sense that because they have a sixth sense of manipulation. And then they would say, nope, not so fast. Boom, drop the hammer and here comes the abuse all over again and the cycle goes around and around and around and you couldn't wrap your head around it. But now, again, you're experiencing, let's say, a rage fit. What happens there? Well, let's say you were in a relationship for a couple of years now and these rage fits are becoming more and more frequent and then maybe one day you stand up for yourself and you say, you know what, I'm not gonna tolerate this. I'm not your child. I am not your mom. I'm not your dad. I'm supposed to be in a romantic relationship with you. Remember we took our wedding vows years ago and they would just look at you like, you're so weak, you're so pathetic. I didn't sign up for this either. And when they would say that, then you would double down. This is, one, this is a very important part of the video. You would double down and say, well, wait a minute, I've been dealing with this for years and you're, you're not getting better, you're getting worse and you're spending less and less time with me and now there are complete strangers entering the house or you're texting on your phone till three in the morning or you're not coming home from work when you're supposed to be, you're not around on the weekends, you're basically MIA and I'm here footing the bill, paying for everything and all you're doing is gallivanting the area and doing whatever you want to do, what's going on? Then they would look at you and say, you know, you're fortunate to be with me. So many people wanna be with me. I knew you would say something like this. What's your problem? Go get help, you need to see a therapist. And then what would happen? Maybe you experienced reactive abuse and you said, that's it, I'm done. Can't take this any longer, I'm out. And then what would they do? They would look at you and think in disbelief, how dare you end this? I'm gonna end this before you do. And the next thing you know, boom, the next day comes, moving trucks there because you called them out and you put up a boundary and you held your ground. And next thing you know, you're discarded. This, these are the kind of endings of the narcissistic relationship that happens so frequently. They end with a bang, a thud, a crash. You're not expecting the person that perhaps you were in love with 
who was never in love with you. You're not expecting them to just disappear like a cockroach in the middle of the night when you turn the light switch on. But that's what they do because when you're getting so close to figuring out who they are and they can no longer control your emotions for a period of time. Now I know that's, a, I'll throw a caveat in there in a second. When they can't control you, that's when they realize, wait, you're actually getting onto the scent. You're getting closer and closer to figuring out what I am. I need to end this. And I have a couple sources of supply lined up and I can go jump in a car and be there tomorrow and I'll discard you and I'll go on to this person and I'll play the victim card that you're the toxic person, you're the nasty person, and you weren't the person you said you were, but when in fact it's all about the narcissist. The other thing is remember, post discard, let's say you were discarded, if you were my heart goes out to you, or if you, you ended it yourself, it was still a challenging relationship to say the least to be a part of. But post relationship, they are still controlling your emotions for a period of time when you don't have the wisdom. Because when you don't know what narcissism is because you weren't taught it in school and you don't find that needle in a haystack and understand what kind of relationship you were in and that it wasn't just you, but also it wasn't your fault, you were manipulated. That's when you have to really process things and you are extremely sensitive and you are emotional on your own because you're pining for the narcissist, you're missing them, you're wondering if you could have done more, should you have done more, did they ever love you, could they change, what's going on here, there. But all these things, eventually you find that you go down the rabbit hole of exploration and of education and you figure out what narcissism is, then you're like, wait a minute, they were trying to control my emotions the whole time, but not just my emotions, my finances, my social circle, my status, my health, yes, I do mean that, my network of friends, my businesses, my hobbies, my plans in the future, my relationships with people, including children or stepchildren. They wanted to control everything and they knew that they could play you like a puppet master. They knew that they could do this with you because it's what they do with everybody until you get the wisdom. So even post discard, you, your emotions were being toyed with, being messed with, being played with. That's why the narcissist can never give you closure because they can't introspect, they can't be accountable, and they believe that the ending of the relationship was your fault. Nothing, and I mean nothing, could be further from the truth. Did you have a part to play in it? Sure you did, but were you manipulated the whole relationship? Yes, you were. Did the narcissist ever love you? No, they didn't. Did you ever love them? Of course you did, because you're a stable, well-rounded, healthy individual. The narcissist is anything but that. They're a toxic person looking to take advantage of unsuspecting people who don't know their worth or their value. So before I close the video, understand this part. The nar why your emotions were the control, or why your emotions were a pivotal part of the narcissistic relationship, were the fuel for the narcissistic relationship, because this is how they controlled you. If you cooked dinner in the house, would they give you a compliment or would they say you can't cook? Well, if they told you, you that you couldn't cook, then the next time you would think twice about cooking and maybe you would order food in, or maybe you would buy better ingredients or learn how to cook, and then what would happen? Well, you still can't cook because they're invalidating you. They're not there to support you. They were never there to support you. They were there to take from you. They were there to destruct, uh, to drive a wedge between you and any relationship that ever mattered. They wanted you to believe in the mask. They wanted you to not believe in yourself. They wanted to mess with your emotions. They wanted to take you super high and drop you super low on that roller coaster of emotions. And your emotions were the fuel for the narcissist. Before I close the video, remember, the narcissist enjoys, they love and they need negative energy or positive energy. Whatever you provided for them when you were with them, that's what the fuel for the relationship or for them was. So again, if let's say you had a month of you not feeling good or you get being given the silent treatment because you weren't being treated properly and so now you're being given the silent treatment, I hope you follow that. Well, what happens there? I'll tell you, the narcissist is getting supply from that because they're watching your life. You're, they're watching you not advance. They're watching you not be in a good space. They're watching your body, your movements, your facial expressions. They're watching you not be your beautiful, bright, shining light, authentic self. And they get supply from that. Really understand what I'm mentioning to you. That's why when, let's flip it. Let's say you were having a great week. Let's say the narcissist disappeared for a week and they came back and you, you let's say they went on a, a, a trip with friends, alleged friends, wink, wink, and they came back. And then your batteries were charged. You're feeling good because you knew they were gonna go away. They didn't just ghost you, but they, they came back and you're feeling good and great. And they looked at you and they said, wait, you're a little too happy. What, what can I do here? Oh, I know what to do. I'll just throw a monkey wrench in here and control your emotions and rip on you why you didn't text me when I was gone, why you didn't call me, why you don't care about me. I'll just do anything I can because I'm basically a petulant child and I'm trying to control your emotions. I'm trying to take away from that week of pleasantness you had away from me. This is what these people do. That's why the path is to go no contact, block them, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them, if not now when. If you can't do that, utilize Greyrock. 
which means become dull and boring and don't overshare information, don't share information, do the bare bones minimum, become small and get off the radar. So I, guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are on the planet. You are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. God bless you. I love you. And your emotions were the fuel in the narcissistic relationship. They 100% were. There were also many different sources of fuel that you provided, but emotions are huge. They're absolutely huge. Think about the intentional argument the narcissist would display before you went to a barbecue or an event. You'd be getting ready for an event. Let's say it's a wedding. Very simple example. Someone else's wedding, and you're gonna attend with the narcissist. Well, the narcissist would make you wait, and then they would probably throw a monkey wrench in your relationship with them before you jumped in the car to drive to the wedding, and they would put you in a bad mood. What would happen? The narcissist gets supply from that because you're defending it and explaining why they are wrong. And then you're stewing in the car. The narcissist is now giving the silent treatment. Car doors open. You're fuming. You're not in a good mood. You're going to be present with, to that wedding, but you're not yourself because you, your whole uh, event has been thrown off. And the narcissist just looks at you. They wink. They give you the smirk and they say, yep, I got you again. I threw another monkey wrench. I control your emotions. You are so pathetic and weak. This is what they do over and over and over again. Everyone, I love you all. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye guys.